With its deep maritime history, Massachusetts has many port locations that are well situated to serve the new offshore wind industry in the U.S. This tour will explore port facilities and waterfront sites in New Bedford, Fall River, and Somerset on the Massachusetts South Coast that are well suited for reuse to support the offshore wind market. We will also make a quick stop at the Massachusetts Maritime Academy in Bourne. For more information on these sites and others in the Boston metro area, including existing conditions and redevelopment scenarios, please visit the Offshore Wind Ports and Infrastructure Assessment on the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center website. New Bedford, a city with a long, rich history of fishing and maritime expertise, has several sites that are top contenders for offshore wind use. Each of these sites in New Bedford boasts no overhead restrictions, good access to the interstate highway and railway, and access to local suppliers and workforce. Among the closest sites to the offshore wind leases, they are located about 35 nautical miles from the leading edge of the Massachusetts and Rhode Island wind energy areas. The Port of New Bedford is protected by the Army Corps of Engineers Hurricane Barrier. The first stop on our tour today is the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal. Designed, constructed, owned, and operated by the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, this terminal was the first purpose-built construction base port for offshore wind in the U.S. This facility was designed to accommodate heavy lift capacity at the quayside and across most of the laydown and storage area. It has on-site office and warehouse space and no overhead restrictions. Vineyard Wind and Mayflower Wind have committed to using the terminal as their primary port for the staging, assembly, and deployment of turbine components. And the terminal is available for other wind farm projects as well. The next stop on our tour takes us up to the Eversource Energy Sprague Oil Site, also located in the Port of New Bedford. This port site combines several parcels into a primed large acreage waterfront site. A former power plant and manufactured gas processing facility, this site has access to deep water and an existing key site that is located just north and in very close proximity to the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal. While the site could be used with the existing former power plant building, removing it would enhance the connectivity and usability of the site. Next, we travel south of the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal to the Hathaway Mills Complex. This property consists of six parcels comprising approximately 25 acres. Five of the parcels are privately owned and house five large 20th century mill buildings and vacant lots. The Hathaway Mills Complex also includes the Southern Storage Area, a four-acre site that is part of Mass CEC's New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal. Our next stop in the Port of New Bedford takes us to New Bedford State Pier, owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and managed by Mass Development. This site is currently used for the New Bedford Ferry Terminal, warehousing for cargo operations, and berths for vessels calling on the Port of New Bedford. Several of the State Pier's existing uses cannot be displaced. However, its central location in the Port of New Bedford and proximity to the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal and other port sites provide opportunities to utilize State Pier for operations and maintenance, intersite transport, and warehousing. Our tour continues with North Terminal, a large complex owned by the City and Port of New Bedford. At present, the site is home to a variety of businesses and operations including the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's dewatering facility, a marine transportation facility, a metal fabricator, and repair shops. With a history of maritime and industrial use, and direct access to the interstate highway and deep water, North Terminal has great potential to serve both commercial fishing and offshore wind industries. Redevelopment work by the Port of New Bedford is underway to expand the quayside and back area locations. The final stop on our tour of sites in New Bedford Harbor takes us to the Revere Copper site at the north end of New Bedford Harbor. Once the largest non-ferrous rolling mill in North America, it is now used for light manufacturing, storage, and office space. Given its proximity to the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal and the port's north terminal, the Revere Copper site holds promise for various uses in offshore wind and other marine sectors such as shipbuilding. Leaving the port of New Bedford, we head west to Mount Hope Bay and the municipalities of Fall River and Somerset. 
Like New Bedford, these sites are located between 35 and 40 nautical miles from the leading edge of the Massachusetts and Rhode Island wind energy areas. While some of these sites face varying overhead restrictions, their access to the interstate highway system, as well as a strong local workforce and supply chain, make several sites in these municipalities strong contenders to serve the offshore wind industry's various port requirements. Our first stop in Mount Hope Bay takes us to Fall River State Pier, an active marine cargo terminal that also serves commercial fishing vessels, ferry service, and the cruise ship industry. Among its strengths, Fall River State Pier has two deep water berths and on-site rail access. These attributes, along with its proximity to other port sites, make State Pier well-suited to support the transfer or storage of small components. With varying degrees of redevelopment, this site could also support offshore wind operations and maintenance or blade transport. Next, we move along the Taunton River to the Borden and Remington complex, comprised of two parcels of land. This waterfront and railway adjacent property is an active manufacturing and storage facility, and for a period in its recent history, it was used to manufacture land-based wind blades. The complex's considerable acreage and location proximate to other port sites and the wind energy areas make it very attractive for redevelopment to serve offshore wind manufacturing and installation, particularly if existing buildings are removed. Next, we jump across the Taunton River to the former site of the Brayton Point Power Plant, located in Somerset. The site of a former coal-fired power plant that went out of service in 2017, the Brayton Point Commerce Center is being redeveloped specifically to serve the offshore wind industry. Significant portions of the former power plant infrastructure have been demolished, including the two large cooling towers which were imploded in 2019. The existing high-voltage transmission infrastructure at Brayton Point provides a desirable point of interconnection for offshore wind projects, and private transmission company Anbaric has committed to a 1,200-megawatt HVDC converter and 400 megawatts of battery storage on site. This large site also features a substantial active quayside and deep water berth, making it ideal for a broad range of offshore wind manufacturing as well as laydown and other activities. Our next stop will take us up the Taunton River to the former Montauk power plant site. This site also formerly housed a coal-fired power plant, which was decommissioned in 2010, and therefore also has the benefit of access to existing high-voltage transmission infrastructure. It has an active working quayside with deep water access and a large turning basin. Situated just across the Taunton River from the Weaver Cove facility, Montauk provides opportunities to utilize both sites in tandem. Next, we jump back across the Taunton River to visit our final port facility in Fall River, the Weaver's Cove Energy Site. A former petroleum distribution facility, Weaver's Cove is currently vacant and largely unused. Easily accessible by road and adjacent rail, Weaver's Cove is ideally suited for certain turbine and foundation manufacturing activities. While some quayside upgrades may be necessary to support offshore wind activities, the site's history of industrial use, coupled with its relatively large and open acreage, make it an advantageous and versatile option for offshore wind port development. The last stop on our tour takes us up the coast towards Cape Cod and Bourne. Training specific to the needs of offshore wind is essential to getting the Massachusetts and regional workforce ready and qualified to work on projects offshore. Along with other institutions and organizations in the Commonwealth, the Massachusetts Maritime Academy is leading the way. With support from Mass CEC, Mass Maritime has established the first in the nation Global Wind Organization, or GWO, basic safety training specifically for offshore wind. The Academy, a preeminent maritime college in the U.S., has a long history of education and training maritime professionals. GWO basic safety training will be required of all workers deployed to work on wind projects offshore. After constructing a crew transfer training facility and a working at Heights Tower on their campus in Bourne and training local instructors to teach the course, Mass Maritime is now offering all five modules of GWO basic safety training, including sea survival, providing a local venue for a much needed training resource. There are several offshore wind workforce training and development programs available and in development in Massachusetts, 
and you can find out more on our website. Thank you for joining us on our offshore wind ports tour. With our proximity to seven lease areas totaling more than 1,400 square miles, our prime offshore wind port sites, and our efforts to advance the local and regional workforce and supply chain, Massachusetts is a national hub for offshore wind. Please visit us online or contact the Offshore Wind Team with questions or for more information.